Hey everyone, this is Ryan Clark, founder and CEO of Clark College Consulting and Clark College Funding, the author of two wonderful college planning books and best-selling author. And over the last decade, I've helped over a thousand families with selecting, applying, and getting into their dream college for less than they ever dreamed possible. And today in this newsletter, I'm going to talk about COVID-19 concerns and questions. I've been getting a lot of questions and concerns from my students and parents that I coach. And I thought I'd pass along some of those answers to you as well. So let's get to it. So the first question concern is all about the SAT and ACT. So students and parents are concerned about the limited number of times they're going to be able to take the SAT or ACT. And so the SAT and ACT are trying to add some tapes. As of today, the June 13th SAT is, excuse me, the June 13th ACT and the July 18th ACT are still good to go and the June 6th SAT is still good to go. Now that could change as things change, but right now it's good to go. And we'll see if they're gonna be able to add some more testing dates over the summer and in the fall. Uh, also, colleges understand that you're limited on the number of test, test dates and opportunities to take this test. So colleges have decided, not all of them, but some of them have decided to go test optional. And if you'd like to see which colleges are test optional, you can go to a website called fairtest.org. And on this website, you'll see the colleges that are permanently fair, uh, test optional and the colleges that have decided to go temporarily test optional. So some colleges have decided to go te temporarily test optional for a year or three years. Students are worried because they're not able to build up their activities list. They're not able to go and, and do sports or no spring performances or no student council or no volunteering hours, so on and so forth. And so they're, they're wondering what the colleges are going to do. Speaking to the colleges this week, they're all looking and, and understanding that students are not able to do these extracurricular activities. But they are suggesting if you really want to try to stand out to do something and while you have this free time. So if you want to try to learn a new language or you want to try to play a new instrument, teach yourself using YouTube videos, or you want to list all the books that you read, or maybe it's doing a tu online tutoring. Whatever it may be, this is a great opportunity to help you stand out. But if you're not able to do anything like that, colleges certainly understand. So in the next question concern that I'm getting a lot of questions about is pass-fail. So a lot of high schools are going to pass-fail, and guess what, a lot of colleges are going to pass-fail as well. And most of my students in high school are wondering, how is that going to affect college admissions? How is that going to affect my GPA? And the best um, way I can tell you is that colleges are looking at this and considering this and understanding your plight. And so they, they're not going to put as much emphasis on your GPA, but they are going to take a look at other parts of your application in more detail. Specifically, your teacher letters or recommendation are going to be extremely important because your teachers are going to be able to explain uh, your your classes are going to be, be explained or going to be able to explain how well you did in some of these classes and what type of student you are. So they're going to put a little bit more emphasis that, on that in your essay as well. What about writing your essay? Well, I can tell you that the colleges are expecting a lot of essays next year all about the COVID-19 experience. One thing that they do not want to get is the same topic over and over and over and over again, because after reading hundreds, and it can get kind of monotonous. So what I'm hearing is the colleges are not going to deter you from writing those essays, but it's going to be harder for you uh, to write about this experience because you're not going to be able to stand out as much, if that makes sense. So it's got to be really, really good if you want to talk about the COVID-19 experience. So I would encourage you to certainly write that, but also look at other options and opportunities to uh, write a different type of topic if you can. And oh, by the way, on Friday, I'm gonna be interviewing a local SA teacher, and she's absolutely wonderful. We're gonna go in more details and give you some more steps. So if you'd like to hear about that, make sure you sign up for my newsletter because I'm gonna be sending that out probably beginning of next week. What about your college visits? How can we do college visits? And if you saw so a previous uh, newsletter of mine, we talked about there's some resources out there for college visits. So, you know, this time of year in the spring, this is a wonderful time where most juniors and sophomores actually go visit colleges and see if they like the school and walk around, but they're not able to do that now. Uh, so colleges are trying to help you. And what they're doing is virtual college visits and virtual admission events where you can speak to tour guides, you can speak to other students. Sometimes you can chat with a professor I even saw one last week where the professor did a mock uh, class where he taught an actual lesson so you could get an idea what it's like being in that type of classroom situation. So it was really neat. 
And I will tell you that certain colleges put a lot of emphasis on what's called demonstrated interest. And demonstrated interest means that the student shows interest in the college. And guess what? Colleges are making note who attends these virtual events and who does not. So I encourage you, if you're thinking about a college, make sure you do these virtual events because it does show demonstrated interest. So next thing I want to talk about is taking action. And the best thing you can do right now, because things are changing so differently, so dynamically on a week to week, almost day to day basis when it comes to college admissions, is you have to stay informed. And one of the best ways to stay informed is follow me or log into my blog or get this new letter, letter every week because I'm gonna keep you informed. Another website I wanna share with you is the NACAC website. And I'll put the link below. And the NACAC website is a great resource because it also will, will update you and provide you with a centralized place where you can check on updates on all the schools. Well, I hope that helps. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please like and share this. I would appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay healthy and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.